Hello, my name is Tyler. I am a customer success engineer with ThoughtSpot. Hello, my name is Ricardo Silva. I'm a customer success architect with ThoughtSpot. Um, today is the second installment of the webinar series. We're going to talk about ThoughtSpot embedded analytics. Um, so it means how can you leverage ThoughtSpot from your application. We're going to do a high level review and then get into a little detail. And at the end you're going to have some additional information that you can um, research more. Tyler, how can I leverage ThoughtSpot um, from my application? One of the primary use cases that we see our customers uh, use our embedded analytics for is to wrap our search functionality into their existing application. And sometimes they'll choose to resell that in an OEM solution um, to their existing client base, or it'll be an internal portal that they expose to their end users. Uh, and it gives their users the ability to search the data that the admin chooses to share with them uh, within their existing application instead of in ThoughtSpot itself. So that's a pretty interesting use case that we've seen a lot. Um, another use case that was surprising a little bit, but is actually really cool, is people will use ThoughtSpot as a back-end calculation engine. Uh, they'll take advantage of ThoughtSpot's uh, speed and scale in order to crunch crazy volumes of data uh, in seconds as opposed to minutes or hours. So we're talking 100 million, 200 million, you know, 500 million rows of data uh, in a couple seconds and then expose the results of that data uh, in the portal to their end users. This is great. So where are the different methods that I can um, use ThoughtSpot with my application? Yeah, good question. Um, so there's a couple different methods we can use, uh, four to be exact. So the first way, as I just mentioned, is that we can embed uh, our entire relational search page. And I'll talk more a little bit about that later, but you can embed the entire search experience of ThoughtSpot into your existing portal. Um, another way would be to embed a single chart. Uh, you can take advantage of ThoughtSpot's existing charting library and some of the other functionality that we offer with our charting library to embed uh, a map or a heat map or uh, maybe even a pivot table within your existing application. Uh, one of the third ways that you can do it, Ricardo, is uh, to embed an entire dashboard. So instead of a single chart, think of it as a bunch of uh, visualizations in the form of a dashboard that you can embed right into your application. Uh, the last and final way is going to be to use our REST APIs, our data APIs, to bring back raw data uh, from an existing chart or pin board. We call them pin boards as opposed to dashboards. Right. Um, and then uh, expose that in any way that you want to your end users. Uh, that last way offers a little bit more control over your data, uh, but it also has a, a little bit more of a development cost involved. So it really depends on what you want. Okay, so and we do that with security, right? So you're only allowed to see things that you, yeah. in all four different ways. So only the data that you are allowed to see, you're going to see, right? So yeah, exactly. So I'll talk about this a little bit later, but the idea is that uh, every user before uh, they can see any data in ThoughtSpot has to first authenticate against the ThoughtSpot system. So this takes advantage of ThoughtSpot's existing security models. Uh, that way users only see data that they're supposed to see. What are the things that I need to consider when embedding uh, ThoughtSpot into my application? Yeah, so uh, there's three key things that you need to consider. The first is which domains or IP addresses you're going to be making requests to ThoughtSpot from. So your existing application has an IP address. Uh, we need to know what that IP address is ahead of time. And the reason we need to know this is because we have to configure your core settings on the ThoughtSpot server. So ThoughtSpot restricts access to any requests to data from any application unless the IP address for that application has been previously whitelisted. For those of you that don't know what CORS is, CORS is just a mechanism to request resources from another application, in this case, ThoughtSpot. In order to configure your CORS settings, uh, for the time being, you're going to need to reach out to support at thoughtspot.com, and someone will reach out to you shortly to help you configure the right domain or domains that you have and that you want to uh, request information from. As far as troubleshooting cores messages goes, if you see anything like an HTTP response code of 401, or if you get a console error message of no access control origin allowed, um, that's a pretty good indication that your cores configuration hasn't been set up correctly. So in that event, you should probably reach out to support at thoughtspot.com to figure out what your current setting is and what you need to do to change it. So the second thing you're going to need to consider uh, when setting up an existing portal application 
is your authentication method. So as I mentioned earlier to Ricardo, uh, everything in ThoughtSpot has to be authenticated. There is no exception to this rule. Um, if you're going to request data from ThoughtSpot, you first have to be authenticated against the system. Uh, this allows you to take advantage of your existing security model in ThoughtSpot, so you only see the data that you're supposed to see. So we have two options when it comes to authentication via the APIs. We can either do a REST API call. So the REST API calls are best if you have an LDAP system set up, LDAP authentication, or if you're creating users locally in ThoughtSpot. So physically going into ThoughtSpot and entering users manually. Um, the REST API is a post request. The location of that API is at uh, colosum slash v1 slash session slash login. And that takes three variables. The first two, of course, are your username and password. And the third is a Boolean called remember me. Um, the advantage of using the REST APIs is that it's really easy to implement. You know, all you have to do is really just set up a user in ThoughtSpot and then make the post call and you're authenticated. Uh, the downside is that you have to rely on third party encryption and security methods to keep your passwords safe as they're going across the network. So we're talking uh, any existing SSL certification you have, so like HTTP versus HTTPS, or any firewalls that you have set up on your network, or any proxy service that you're using to interface between your application and ThoughtSpot. And the other method that you can use is uh, single sign-on, uh, SAML specifically. So uh, it's best to use single sign-on if you already have a single sign-on identity management solution. Uh, in order to do this, you first need to configure ThoughtSpot to talk to your single sign-on solution. Uh, so in order to do that, you'll need to, again, reach out to ThoughtSpot support. Someone will reach out to you and will help you configure ThoughtSpot to talk to your existing solutions. Um, from then on, you can then uh, authenticate against ThoughtSpot or the APIs using your single sign-on uh, identity management tool. So once you've made your integration uh, between ThoughtSpot and whatever SSO application you're using, um, you then need to go out to our help page and download a JavaScript library that will allow you to interface with your single sign-on application using the APIs. Um, it's very well documented how this process works in our application administration guide. So you can check that out if you want to see code samples on how that works. Um, we also have a GitHub repository where we have plenty of samples of uh, how SSO can be integrated uh, with your portal application. So there's a couple advantages to doing uh, authentication with SAML as opposed to your REST APIs. Um, the most important of which is that you have much easier user management. So you're, you're managing all of your users for all of your applications in a single place, as opposed to having to manage users in your SSO application and then also manage users separately in ThoughtSpot. Um, another cool advantage of using SSO is that we're not passing any passwords through the network since ThoughtSpot is talking directly to your single sign-on application in order to authenticate the user. Uh, some disadvantages, of course, are that there's a, a little more initial overhead involved in setting up a single sign-on application to work with ThoughtSpot. It's not as simple as making a simple uh, post request in an API call. Well, since we're talking about uh, authentication, SSO, and SAML, you know, there's always cookies that come into mind, session cookies and stuff. How do yeah. we handle that? Yeah, uh, so it's a good question. So with SAML, we don't actually need to handle the cookies. The idea is that uh, if your session expires in SAML, SAML will automatically try to re-authenticate the user uh, against the single sign-on system. You know, when it comes to your REST APIs, it's a little different. So when you make the login call uh, with your REST API, uh, your cookies are stored in the web browser as they normally are. So if you have remember me equals true, uh, your cookies will be stored for 30 days by default before your session times out. Uh, if, if remember me equals false, then your cookies will last maybe a few hours before you get a timeout call. And then any activity on the server refreshes the timeout period for your session. So when you're dealing with cookies in a web-based programming language, uh, the cookies will be maintained by the browser. Uh, however, when you're using something like Python or Bash, the cookies are not maintained. So you'll have to store the session headers and pass them with every API call. Something to consider. So the last thing you need to consider is what your use case is in the first place. Uh, what kind of APIs do you want to invoke? Uh, and what would be the best for your application? So I mentioned earlier that we have 
four different ways to embed Thoughtspot analytics into your existing portal. The first of which is uh, this full search experience. So if you're going with the full search experience, you're giving your users free reign over the data that you share with them, um, with the exception of the security that you apply to that data. Uh, the second option is that you can embed just the chart or the pin board that you have. So when it comes to that, you're taking advantage of the existing charting library. Uh, there's no overhead when it comes to that. And you also get a few other cool little features and functionality that I'll show to you here in a minute. Uh, and the last way that you can use is our REST APIs. The REST APIs give you really tight control over how you want to expose data to the customer. Uh, you can either do like a single number, you can do your own charting library if you want some other style besides what Thoughtspot offers, and there's a few other things you can do around user and group management. So I'm going to show you right now just a quick demo. Um, I threw together a small, simple application that explains uh, how each of these things might work. So here we have a sample application. Um, the first visualization you see here is just a simple embed of our search bar. So from here, uh, you'll notice that it's basically just the search uh, web page minus the top navigation bar, that black top navigation bar. So from here, you can do anything like, you know, in my case, I want to do loan amount, um, let's say by loan type, and let's say monthly. So that's the basic idea. And then, of course, you have access to uh, whatever data sources that your admin has decided to share with you. So the next thing I was talking about is um, embedding a full pin board. Uh, in this case, you can see that we have all of our pin board level filters here um, included, and we have all of our little tabs here. Uh, you can scroll down, and there's a few different options you have. Uh, in this case, I've only given, been given permission to download a chart, but you can also uh, right-click on anything and drill down on literally anything. Uh, one of the advantages of ThoughtSpot is that there are no predefined drill paths. So you give uh, your users the ability to explore the data in that way. So it's a little more restricted than the search bar, but it still gives your users some ability to explore their data. And again, that was a, a dashboard, but I also have here um, an embedded visualization. Uh, in this case, it's just a simple pivot table, um, and I can interact with this in the same way that I would interact with a pivot table in ThoughtSpot. And the final way, of course, is to use our REST APIs. Uh, for this, I've just built out an AJAX call uh, using our JSON library, so I'm going to show that to you now. I can click the Get Data button, and here you can see this TS public slash v1 slash pinboard data. I can click on that and it'll show me all the data that I retrieved. So in this case, each of these uh, identifiers represents a unique visualization. And I can see the data in each visualization and the column headers in each visualization. So when you use our REST APIs, the data is returned as JSON. All right, thanks for the demo. What are, what are the tools and applications I can leverage if I want to develop my integration with ThoughtSpot? What, what is it that you recommend we, we use? So we've got a bunch of tools that you can use, the first of which is our ThoughtSpot API guide. Um, it gives you detailed information about how to use our APIs in ThoughtSpot. Um, we also have a ThoughtSpot community. I definitely recommend you check that out at community.thoughtspot.com. Um, there you can ask any question uh, and usually get an answer within a couple hours from either another person in the community or uh, a ThoughtSpot expert themselves. And the third way you can get information is we have a GitHub community. So on this GitHub community, we post helpful tools and sample code and things that you can study to uh, get a leg up on developing with ThoughtSpot's APIs. And last, we have this concept of ThoughtSpot uh, office hours where you can spend a half an hour talking to uh, a ThoughtSpot employee about REST APIs if you have specific questions or if you need help troubleshooting an error, uh, definitely feel free to reach out and we can set up uh, a WebEx to have a conversation with you that way. So guys, again, if there's anything that you want to see us go more in depth into, um, please reach out to us at community.thoughtspot.com uh, and make your request there. 
and we will take it into consideration. I really want to thank you for joining us today and tuning in.